What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for August 24th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. It is an Eagles game day. More on that in a minute. Tough one for the Phils. They battled back. Great fight in the ninth, only to lose it in the tenth. They still won the series, but I I think I love the fight in this team. I, I don't think you can ever count them out, and yes, they did not win this game, but... I keep saying it, but coming to the postseason, that's what you want. And that's what this team did in that um, all throughout the postseason, actually. So the fact that they're, they're, they have that mindset, that mentality that doesn't matter, they're, they're going to win. I like, uh, again, it would have been nice to come out on top, but they still have a two-and-a-half game lead over the Cubs and Reds uh, with the Cardinals coming in this weekend. I like where this is this is going. Um, we just got to keep winning series till the end. And I, I think come postseason, they're going to be good, especially if they get that first round. They, they have to get that first wild card because playing in Citizens Bank Park, I mean, we're in mid-August, late August right now, and that place is electric. So we need to get that first wild card. But right now they're up two and a half. So things are looking good in Philly's land. If you want more Phillies coverage, check out our friends at 2008 Phils. They have the world's biggest Phillies email newsletter. Uh, for a limited time, probably at this point throughout the rest of the season, 75% off a subscription. And what that gets you is access to everything they have on their site. The 2008 World Series Championship banner t-shirt. 2008 Phils will follow your Twitter, which in turn will help. It's a good thing if you want to try to grow your brand. Uh done a lot with helping grow the podcast but it's also a good follow for you uh either way 2008 fills with a z because uh just a lot of good tidbits and history stuff and just awesome awesome guy to follow uh you get access to autographs tickets memorabilia uh those types of things and it's just two dollars a month twenty dollars for the year uh follow the link in the description for your 75 percent off exclusively for this day in philly sports history listeners all right it's eagles game day they take on the colts in the final preseason game Really probably not going to be that intrigued. I think for the most part, a lot of the battles are, position battles are, are set. But the hard, the last preseason game is always a good one because you got guys that it's their last chance to, to get some stuff on film for other teams. And the way they've, they've been uh, chippy all week, and there was another uh, little bit of a fight yesterday in uh, the joint practice. So the way that this week has been going with that, it should be an entertaining game, to say the least, for the third preseason game. So I will be flipping. There's no fill, so you might as well, well watch that. Uh, the other thing is apparently there was contact between Howie and the Colts, I guess, about Jonathan Taylor and I guess Jonathan Taylor's camp, um, which I guess makes sense. One, because they're here right now. And two, I mean, I don't think Howie would be doing his due diligence if he did not at least kick the tires on this. What becomes of that, I don't know. The Colts have given until Tuesday, which is the last day of roster cuts, or the day I guess you have to have your final 53-man roster set to get something done. So I, I don't know or think anything's going to happen. And I you don't know what's going to happen with the chemistry. However, I do think it's worth taking a kick at the tires and and seeing what you can do. I want them to be careful, though, because you don't want to, especially this late in the, the preseason, you don't want to upset the chemistry. Uh, but if you can add a talent like Jonathan Taylor to this offense, even if it's for a year, I, I yeah, just think about that. Um, <clears throat> you no, know, you don't have to think about is phillygoat.com because right on their website, they have the countdown to how long you have until you can get your Eagles stuff for opening day. At this point, you're a little bit like four days and 17 hours or so as I'm recording this. So by the time you listen to this, it might be less, but just a hair over four days to get your Eagles gear in time for the opening game. Check out their new uh, the Fly t-shirts with the Kelly Green. Uh, they, they, they're all kinds of Kelly Green stuff. You want to get ready for the Phil's World Series run. They have that. Uh, the Union playoff run. I keep telling you to get in on the Flyers now. This would be the time to get on the bandwagon. I'm, I'm seeing good things on the horizon. I also was able to get season tickets as many as I wanted. 
a year or two prior to there being a waiting list that was 10,000 years long. So sometimes when I have an intuition, it's good. I would say go to Philly Goat, stock up on your flyer stuff now before there's nothing left to run out and then you're left out and not on the bandwagon. While you're there, use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. You help me out, you help them out, help yourself out. And again, the, the, the stuff itself, the, the, the gear they have is just incredible. So go to phillygoat.com, back to school shopping, eagle shopping. You have just a hair over four days to get your stuff for the opening game. Use that promo code for 10% off. All right, the big news in Sixers land, and this is – I don't know why so much gets put into social media stuff, but it was pretty funny. Uh, James Harden has officially unfo- unfollowed Daryl Morey on Twitter. I think it was Twitter or Instagram. One of the, It doesn't matter which one. But he's really socking it to him now. Um, so get ready. Buckle up. This is going to get ugly. Uh, but on this day, we're going back to 1983. And on August 24th, 1983, the Philadelphia Arena was burned down by an arsonist. The arena was located at 46th and Market, and it was the home of the Warriors, the Sixers, the Penn Quakers, numerous um, minor and NHL hockey teams. The Philadelphia Quakers played there back in the 30s for the one year that they were here. Uh, Many basketball teams, um, like semi-pro, uh, things like that, not just the Sixers and Warriors. Uh, hosted rodeos, ice skating, boxing matches, wrestling matches. It was the only place other than Madison Square Garden at the time that the WWFE, I think is the worldwide, WWWF, the worldwide Whatever it was, it was like the Vince McMahon's precursor. It was the only time or the only place other than Madison Square Garden where the uh, heavyweight title changed hands, hosted roller derby, concert, political events. Charles Lindbergh spoke here. Uh, basically, it was the spectrum before the spectrum was the spectrum. And once the spectrum opened, that was sort of the beginning of the end for the old Philadelphia arena. It got was burnt down under mysterious circumstances but on this day in 1983 the old philadelphia arena was burned down by an arsonist under questionable circumstances okay continuing our 31 questions in 31 days for the eagles today we're taking a look at the giants and i think the big question with the giants is where do they go from here they were a playoff team last year are they ready to take the next step? Um, I, I don't know. So they signed uh, Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes to that uh, long-term contract extension. And I, I, maybe it's me and maybe I'm a hater because for me, I the Giants are my bigger rival, than, even than, bigger than the Cowboys. So I tend to like, I, I don't know, maybe my ju- judgment is cloudy with the Giants. I just don't see it with Daniel Jones. I, I don't think he's worth a $40 million contract um, or $40 million a year, I guess it was. But I I don't see it. I don't think he's a good passer. Sure, he has the running ability. I think he's like the Aldi version of maybe. So I, I use the, the, the Aldi version of Jalen Hurts for Marcus Mariota. I think Daniel Jones is probably the Aldi version of Jalen Hurts and Mariota is probably like the true value, great value, whatever the white private label where it just says quarterback. That's probably Mariota. But I just don't see it with Daniel Jones. I don't know if he's going to be the answer for them. Now, they have added some weapons around him. They did bring back Saquon Barkley, who if he stays healthy is good. But, I mean, he – Throughout his career, that's a big question mark. They did sign Darren Waller, but mm, he's good. Don't get me wrong. And that should help uh, Danny Dimes out a lot. But I just don't know how – I just don't see him as being accurate. I don't know. And maybe it goes back to when he was uh, at Duke. I don't know. I just – and when he blew out Temple. I I just don't – I don't see it with him. They do have a solid defense – 
But their offensive line, they didn't really do as much as I would have thought they would have done to improve their offensive line. So that is a glaring weakness. And then when you're going up against the Eagles, whose defensive line is a strength, I still think the Eagles are a, a, a tier above where the Giants are. Um, they also have a, a tough schedule early. So everybody's talking about the Eagles schedule out of the bye, like midseason. So the Eagles could actually theoretically be, I think I think they have the bye week nine or whatever it is, but they could be like seven and two, uh, six. Like they could have a solid foundation going into that. The Giants have that, I think, starting week eight. It's like weeks three through eight is when they have it. So they could be buried early. And I don't know if Danny Jones, Daniel Jones, has the the mindset. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm underselling Daniel Jones. Let me know what you think about that. Um, but again, I get, I'm, maybe the the giant hate is clouding my vision. But I think they they could pose trouble. But I mean, the Eagles blew them out three times last year, and the, I mean, none of those games were really. Close. I, I just, I, I, maybe the games are. I just don't see them have making up that much ground on the Eagles. And I almost feel the Cowboys will get more onto them later. But I, I don't know if you, if you're looking at it. Maybe everybody said that you had the the Braves and the Mets, which the Mets turned out to be a joke. Which hopefully the Cowboys turn out to be a joke. But it's almost like the Giants are like that third team, like the Phillies, and in going into the NFC or going into the NL East season this year. Um, I don't know. I just don't see it. I, I do think they could be a playoff team, but I, I, I don't know. I don't see it. Let me know what you think. Again, maybe I'm selling it. Maybe I'm letting my Giants and Daniel Jones hate get the best of me. But let me know what you think about the Giants. I, I think they're toast, though. Uh, but on this day, back in 1983, the Philadelphia Arena at 46th and Market burned down under mysterious circumstances. Um, I was not able to find if they ever caught the guy who did it, but uh, the end of an era, so to speak. Uh, it's um, an apartment complex now. They, they rebuilt on the area. Uh, more, hopefully, updates on As the Harden Turns, but he's unfollowed him on social media. Uh, be sure to go to Philly Goat. Time's running out to get your Eagles gear in time for the beginning of the season. It's game day. Go Birds. Nobody get hurt. I want to see a good, hard-hitting football game. Uh, not that preseason wins matter, but it'd be nice to, to get a uh, preseason win. Phils are off today. Three games set with the Cardinals this weekend. Let's root against some of those other teams. So we, want, we don't want the Reds or Cubs to win, or the Giants for that matter. I don't even think the Giants are playing. But... This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Thursday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.